What is up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the dining room for an extra special update. This is the 2021 Weston Smith's Rod and Reel Arsenal and it is the most complete it has ever been. Very psyched to showcase everything we have on the table. Uh, when I say it's the most complete, what I mean by that is we have the most technique specific rods at one time that we've ever had. So, you know, maybe in the past I was known for throwing some baits on some rods that were not designed for that technique. And of course, as we first get started in fishing, uh, you're not you're not gonna go out and buy the whole arsenal, right? You should have maybe one go-to rod, maybe you've got one spinning setup and you kind of try and throw all the baits on that rod. You get things done, right, on a budget. You're balling on a budget. And uh, since the last few years, more and more fishing has taken place, we have expanded the arsenal to what it is today. Happy to bring you guys today's episode and showcase the new toys. It also, it is below freezing in Texas, has been for the last few days and will be for the next few. So the fishing vids are kind of on pause at this very moment, but uh, I don't wanna to delay too much. I got a lot to cover. Lo oh my gosh, I mean rods, reels, line, uh, technique specific advice, tips and tricks. So let's just go ahead and dive right into the arsenal. Uh, starting off with the big swim bait setups, the heavy swim bait stuff. You know we've been enjoying throwing the heavy swim baits. And these first three combos are the only ones that are not Guggen Squad rods. And so you guys will be happy for a little variance in the lineup. And to start things off, we have this brand new, well, to us, Miller rods. I already forget the specs on this thing. It's a 710 uh, blah, 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 two piece. It's a two piece. It actually splits right here. These guys are like made in Australia. Here's the deal on this rod. I just got it from my buddy Jay Gone Fishing. I traded him a Shimano Zodia spinning rod for this. And uh, so it's new to us. I just wanted something big and beefy to throw some big heavy swim baits. He knows we recently snapped our cheaper swim bait rod we've been using. So we, he uh, traded us this bad boy. 710, heavy. And I mean, it's rated for baits up to eight ounces, which is perfect because we have this DRT Clash Ghost on here that is uh, weighs in at a little over eight ounces actually. So we're kind of pushing this thing to its limits. <laughs> this combo is exactly designed for the big stuff. So. 25 pound fluorocarbon on a Tranx 400 with the power handle, ladies and gentlemen. That wraps up combo number one. Again, I don't know too much about this rod. Traded for it, it can handle the big baits. That's why we wanted to uh, go ahead and take care of that. But it does have that long swim bait rod handle so you can really get some good leverage casting these things out way deep. It is beefy enough to handle the big stuff. Throws this thing uh, with ease. Yeah, I mean, what else is there to say? Big swim bait set up for 2021, getting the job done. And that is the first of a lot of combos to go through, so let's not delay. Second up, these are actually both the same combo, so I'll kind of bring them forwards here at the same time. One is my left-handed setup, one is my wife Devin's right-handed setup. They are both Tranks 200s. The Left-handed one is a 201. That designation, that odd number, just means it's left-handed if it's a Shimano reel. However, they're both decked out with some aftermarket handles and knobs. These are the DRT varial handles. They're the 110 millimeter size. They're very hard to come by. We got them on a DRT drop. Uh, so you can't just get these handles if you wanted to necessarily, unless you go on eBay and they'll really drive that price up. And enough on the handles. The knobs are working class zero collaborations though. You can't put these knobs on your handles with a stock Shimano. So if you guys are looking for some aftermarket handles and knobs like this on a budget, I just want to throw it out there because I know I'll get questions on these two setups. You might go with that other aftermarket company like Gomexis or I don't know the brand name, but anyways, there's some other aftermarket handles. So, Tranks 200s on these, a little bit lighter duty fluorocarbon, it is 20 pound. It's still big and beefy because we're throwing, you know, three or four ounce swim baits on these setups here. And then the rods are St. Croix 710 Heavy Fast, right? So they're rated for one to four ounce baits. We've got a Citizen Tide on one here, and then we've got a DRT Tiny Clash on the other. I would say they are more catered, this one specifically two larger soft plastic swim baits because they have that real fast tip. Not a whole lot of give and leeway with that tip to work out uh, those treble hook fish. Sometimes when you're throwing the treble hook baits, you can actually rip those treble hooks out since they're smaller uh, with that fast taper. There's not a whole lot of give when those bass are head shaking. So something to consider when you're throwing big treble hook swim baits, you might look at something like, I know a few of my buddies are rocking those Leviathan rods and they have a really good parabolic bend, yet they can handle throwing those big baits. You might look into something like that, but we love these rods. St. Croix, Mojo Bass, uh, Swimbait and A-Rig rods. 710 heavy, fast, 
get the job done. These Tranks, by the way, favorite swim bait reels. They have big beefy gears in them. They're really designed to consistently chunk with those beefed up brakes and gears, and as well as just reel and handle all of the, whoops, handle not breaking light bulbs, uh, all that cranking power. The cranking power when you're really bringing in those big baits time and time again, as well as those big hits from larger fish that can uh, definitely take a toll on the gears on your lighter duty bait caster. So Shimano Tranks, definitely a great reel when you're getting into the big swim bait game. Now, let's get into all the new toys, right? You guys have seen some of those already, not that, not that new Miller Rods deal. But uh, we have now got our Guggen Squad rod lineup complete. Could not be more excited to show you guys. We got literally uh, just about one of every rod in the lineup, meaning like the gold or the green series, or actually gold and green series, and each kind of like a tier, like the reaction, go to, finesse, things of that nature, muscle, reaction. I just said reaction. Anyways, let's go ahead and break these out one by one in no specific order. Also, I know you keyboard warriors, right? I know you fishing professionals out there. Look, simmer down, simmer down. There's gonna be some of these reels here with a little less line than there should be. Uh, also, I just kind of threw these setups together the other day since we got everything and I just wanted to go out and film a video. So some of these reels, as far as the gear ratio, might not be the most ideal to pair with each rod, but don't worry, we're gonna kind of mix and match things. You can see that some of them aren't even set up with any baits yet. So, chill. Here we go. Reaction. First off, start the bidding 7.2 medium moderate. So this reaction rod is gonna be perfect for those reaction style baits. You can see we've got a lipless crankbait on here. What happens is that moderate tip with a little bit more give really helps you not only fling those baits out there, but at the same time, whenever you get those hits, it helps you keep those treble hook baits pinned, which is oftentimes the type of baits you're gonna be throwing on the reaction rod, is those just quick, fast moving crankbaits, whether it's lipless, square bills. When you're throwing those moving baits, not much better than this guy right here. Uh, we have it paired up with a Shimano, what is this, the Scorpion MGL. It has been a while, we got this thing imported. I think we purchased it on Amazon or eBay. Uh, I don't think you can get them here in the States. And regardless, I think it's probably the HG 7.4 to 1 gear ratio. I'll just go ahead and mention that all these reels here, the casting reels, are probably the Shimano HGs primarily. So it's you know looking like 7.2 to 1 or 7.4 to 1 uh, ratio on most of these reels. Some of them are the XG, one or two maybe, where it's even got in that eight range, like an eight two to one or something. So that just means that the spool is spinning 7.2 times for every full turn of the handle. Now, it can be kind of deceiving too, because as you get different spool sizes, some of these are 100s, 150s, 200s, and also I showcase that like Tranks 400, for instance, they might have the same gear ratio, but if it's a larger spool, you're gonna be bringing in more line for every full turn of the handle. So usually on the boxes, when you buy a reel, it tells you how many inches of line per crank you're bringing in. That's kind of what you wanna know. Usually it's between 25 and 33, 35 inches per turn. That's probably even, a, that's ballpark right there, so don't quote me on it, right? But I think a lot of ours are like 28 to 30 something inches of line for every full turn of the handle. So that's my little take on the gear ratio. But yes, the reaction rod, this is the green series. You guys can grab all these rods at a discount, by the way, guggensquad.com, code Weston, if you wanna pick any of these up for yourself, if you think you are lacking in some area. Uh, on the rod department, springtime is coming. Get you one of these. It's actually the biggest way you could support us on this channel and help expand the arsenal even further with some new reels in 2021. Don't think we're sleeping on the new drops. I see the new Diwazillion. I see that thing, all right? I see the new Antares DC. We understand there's a new Scorpion DC out there. There's the Monster Drive Scorpion. We got our eyes on some new reels, but we're not just gonna be able to spend, spend, spend unless we are actually supported by you guys. So thank you all in advance for picking up any of these rods with code Weston on guggensquad.com, helping support our dreams to fish, make videos for you guys full time and get Devin home from work. She's been bartending. I quit my job last year to pursue this full time. So we would love nothing more than y'all support as we talk about the next rod. We've got a gold go to. So the difference between these green and gold series rods primarily, there's, there's a little difference in the carbon blank, right? 
There's also a little bit different in, difference in the guides. So the guides are a little bit heavier duty on these gold series rods. Uh, think about longevity, right? That's really what you're going for. And then I would say the biggest difference visually and even maybe feeling wise is the cork on the gold series rods versus the EVA foam on the green series rods. So those are the main differences right there. So gold go-to rod. This is gonna be your all purpose. If you only had one casting rod and you're just getting started, you would go with something like the go-to. We also have the green series go-to over here. And that is probably the one you would start off at first because it's coming in at that cheaper price point. But the gold go-to is what we have in our hands here. Uh, you've got the hook keepers on all the rods right in the same placement on the casting ones. And then on the spinning rods, they have that hook keeper down here on the butt end, which we'll showcase as we get to them. But these cats are driving me crazy. The grip on these rods, just forget about it. There's no feeling quite like these guys right here. So no matter where you position your hand, what feels most comfortable for you guys, you're gonna have a great grip on these things. This is a Metanium DC reel. So a seven foot medium heavy fast action rod. So the go-to rod can really handle most everything in your tackle box effectively. From some of those moving baits to a lot of those bottom baits, you really get the best of both worlds when you're working with the go-to rod. So if you're looking for just one rod to take out with you on a day of bank fishing, maybe fishing off the kayak, grab you a couple go-to's and you will be 100% set. Seven foot, medium heavy, fast action rod, you gotta have one in your arsenal and it will cover you for just about everything. Now, next up, haven't even got the tag off this guy. This is a green muscle rod. One of my most favorite rods, to be honest, is something around a seven and a half foot range, heavy, fast action rod. And that's exactly what you have with the muscle rod. I'll be throwing jigs on this, worms, Texas rigs, uh, frogs. So the muscle rod is designed to muscle these fish out of the thick cover. Think about when you're flipping, think about when you're uh, frogging in the lilies, think about when you are bottom, uh, wor working those bottom baits, Texas rigs, right through those tree stumps and brush piles. You really need something like the muscle rod to get those fish in the boat, flip them things up there nice and quick and land your new PB on something like a 7.5 heavy extra fast rod. Uh, you can feel everything with these rods, by the way. The sensitivity is off the chain. So when I'm working a bait on the bottom, I know when I've got grass on there. I know when I'm working over rock. I know when I'm working over that stump and you can feel when you get those bites. That's when it's hammer time and you get those fish landed. Also, you can see they've got the Catch Smart system labeled on the side so you know maybe what would work and what might not work on these rods. So this one's kind of got a one out of four on the finesse bait. So it's saying it's not really the one you'd want to throw those lighter baits on. It doesn't have much of a tip uh, to really get the fling on those things. A lot of your casts will be inaccurate with the light baits. This one is really designed for muscling the big baits. It also says there's two out of four on the twitch, so you're not going to want to be doing too much rod twitch movement with this, like jerk baits. We've got another rod designed for that. And then also on reaction, it says there's three out of four, so you can throw some reaction baits. Think maybe like a, a chatterbait bladed jig, for instance, right? You chunk one of those out there, single hook, you need that fierce hook set, you might go with something like a muscle. You could certainly get things done with those single hook moving baits as well. Maybe those larger soft plastic swim baits, single hook, muscle rod, get them up out of the grass, bring them home. Next up guys, we have got the Gold Reaction Series rod with a Curado K. This is a 200 HG, so 7, 4 to 1 gear ratio reel. And we're gonna be throwing out the crank baits, the moving baits, those reaction style baits on this guy right here. Uh, a lot of times, because we have two set up, maybe if we find a hot reaction bait bite, we have two cranks set up and we just kind of rake them up. That's why we have a lot of these rods and uh, what you might call a duplicate, but you gotta be ready. Look, when the bite is on, get in there and catch those fish. So a second reaction rod in the lineup. Scoot some of these forward. We also have these two extras to show you guys. Remember we talked about how there's some new reels in the works for 2021. A lot of hot drops. We might be investing in some new gear moving forward. So. What do we got here? Is this the uh, Finesse Light? Okay, so this guy right here, I believe is a 610. Yep, medium, moderate. So there's two Finesse rods in the Guggen Squad lineup. Now the Finesse and the Finesse Light. We'll get to the finesse, but this is the 610 uh, medium moderate. I've got a, a small jerk bait right here. This guy is known for getting us bird's nests, especially when it's windy, when we're throwing it on casting gear, right? So when you're throwing those finesse cranks, finesse jerk baits, definitely wanna work it with something that's not gonna get you nested. And with that moderate tip, 
It's got great action for working some of those lighter work moving treble hook baits, right? Keep those fish pinned. But this guy's also gonna be good for the lightest of drop shot work, Ned rigs, etc. So we have one spinning combo on deck. We've got a Shimano Stratic CI4 Plus on that guy. This is the 3000 because it has almost like that power handle. So yes, it's a little overkill for this rod specifically, but we really have two spinning reel setups. So I mean, it's gotta go on one or the other. Lastly, that hook keeper, like I say, down there on the butt end of the rod. You guys are definitely gonna see a lot of use and action out of these spinning rods, probably the next month or so until things really start to warm up. When the bite gets finicky and those fish do not wanna eat, finesse it down, drop it down, drop shots. Think about micro swim baits on a Ned rig with an exposed hook getting the job done, flinging them out there on the spinning setups. Next up, we have the Scorpion DC, our first ever Shimano reel purchased, and it actually is my highest viewed fishing video at the moment, was the first impressions on this guy, and it has been through it. I mean, it's hit the concrete a handful of times, and uh, she still runs and drives. We got it serviced once, and it is a little clanky, but nothing is actually like wrong with this reel as far as like the integrity and being able to really crank those fish and whatnot, so. That is that, love the reel. Uh, it's got the IDC5 of the more expensive Metanium DC. And so with that, you have an auto feature. So whether it is super windy out or there's no breeze at all, or you tie on a heavier bait and drop to a lighter bait, you don't have to adjust the brakes, it does it all for you. It's pretty sick how you can uh, throw just about anything and not get a bird's nest on this guy right here. You of course can dial in the tension for your bait, but once you have it dialed, you can just forget about the nest on the Scorpion DC. The thing is ridiculous. And we've got it paired up on a gold muscle. So this is possibly my favorite rod in the lineup. So we have a gold muscle 7.5 heavy, extra fast. What we have on here is, uh, what is this guy? 316 Mission Fish, working through the grass. We caught one of our first fish of the day on this guy on the boat the other uh, week. Again, think about those bigger jigs, Texas rigs, heavy stuff, right? Now I realize I forgot to talk about line on a lot of these, so let me just go ahead and say, if you're throwing something like the reaction rod, you're gonna want something more along the lines of 10 to 15 pound. 12 pound is what a lot of these cranks are. When you see their depth rating, when you see their like one to three foot diver or like you know four to six foot dive rating or dives up to 10 feet that's generally calculated on 12 pound fluorocarbon line so if you're using thicker line it's a little bit uh, tougher to cut through the water and you might not get the full depth out of those crankbaits uh, let's say you're using something like braid with a diving crankbait well you're probably only going to get if it says it's like a one to three foot diver you're probably only going to get one foot out of it if it says it's like a five or six foot diver you might only get a couple feet out of it so it's something to think about uh, i would go with something like 10 to 15 pound fluorocarbon on those reaction rods when it comes to the muscle I'm talking 15 to 20. You got uh, heavy hook sets. You don't want to be breaking a lot of stuff off. You're going to be fishing the thick cover. So if you're going with, uh, if you're not using it as like a frog and stick and you're not using braid on there to begin with, then I would recommend something like 15 to 20 pound fluorocarbon. On this one, I would say it is uh, 17, but 15 to 20, you're looking good. Just kind of depends on how line shy the fish might be in your area as well. If you're fishing super clear water or maybe it's slight stain, etc., you can kind of get away with some thicker line in those stains water conditions than you would be able to in the clear water. Go on Marshmallow, don't get hooked. Next up, because we love the muscle rods so much, we have a second gold muscle, and so Devin and I will probably always have on some baits tied on to these muscle rods. This is one is on braid, so think about frogging, or maybe we'll do a leader and we'll do some of those heavy rigs. This one's not even got the protective film off the cork yet. 7.5 heavy, extra fast, man. You're gonna be seeing us throw these a lot, so be on the lookout, the muscle rod. Just got a couple more over here. All right, the green go to, probably the best way to get introduced to Guggen Squad rods. If you are new to fishing or just looking to get into the Guggen Rods lineup. This is the most affordable all-purpose rod that we offer. So green go to seven foot, medium heavy, fast action. You really can't get much better than that. The EVA foam does feel fantastic. If you like that green color like I do, this is definitely the one for you. Also, I forgot to mention up until this point that all the green series rods have a measuring tape so you can actually keep track of your PB length bass. So uh, generally speaking, if you're talking about, what is this down here at the end? 23 inches. If you're over 23 inches, you probably got yourself a healthy fish. I also like on the guide wraps how that's that green color, right? And then also one thing I haven't mentioned up until this point is uh, where the green meets the black is actually where the action of the rod starts to take place, where that bend happens when it's under that pressure and it's loaded up. So as you cast those baits out or as you get a big fish on, you realize exactly where that bend is gonna start. The rest is all 
backbone. So think about that on those green series rods. Oh, I almost forgot to mention the reel. <laughs> SLX DC, this one's left-handed, so this is more mine right here. 151, y'all hear that? Oh, well, that's not gonna help. Well, that just sounds like wine. Anyways, yeah, I can hear the DC chip. So this is the 151 XG, so that's extra high gear ratio. So this one is an eight two to one. I've got some braid on here. It really needs to get re-spooled. I don't know if I'm gonna keep rocking some braid on this or not, but uh, I did get it set up on this green go two rod. So another all purpose setup right here, ready to hit the water. I gotta get some baits tied on, man. And lastly, when you think about spinning, you probably think about something like a wacky rig or a weightless setup, and that is exactly what we have on this guy right here. So this is the Finesse series, not the Finesse Light. So I believe it's a seven foot medium moderate or uh, potentially medium fast. It might actually be kind of like a faster tip as far as like if you compare it to the Finesse Light. And so definitely wanna work uh, for me some of those bottom baits where I get a little bit more feeling out of the pops with it. And then that Finesse Light again is probably more geared towards some treble hook baits for me and some lighter cranks, uh, jerk baits, things of that nature. So the green series coming in at 100 buckaroos. You can save 10% with code West and help support the channel. This one I believe is a two piece. So if you need something that is travel friendly, toss this thing in the most compact of vehicles, hit the banks, or you just need something good for travel. Two piece is gonna be what you might want and you can cover so much with a spinning rod and some spinning gear. And also it's a ton of fun fighting the fish, right? On this lighter, on the lighter gear and these lighter sets. Setups. They'll take you for a ride. You get a two or three pounder on and it might feel like a five on the spinning gear when you've got it set up just right for the finesse. We also have a Shimano Stratic CI4 on this one, but this is the 2500 spool size. So just a little bit less line capacity than that 3000. And you'll see that the handle is slightly smaller, just their standard Shimano handle versus that like semi power handle you saw on that larger 3000 spool size reel. So we have a wacky rig set up on here. Actually, it might be a Nico rig. We might have a little weight in the nose of that Sanko and uh, this is exactly what it's designed for. You'll definitely see me throwing a lot of drop shots on this when the bike gets tough. You'll see me throwing wacky rigs, Nico rigs, things of that nature. I believe I've got 15 pound braid spooled up on this guy and then we have got a liter of probably 10, 10 pound fluorocarbon. I, I still, I don't like to drop it down to like six or eight around here because there's so many opportunities to get snapped off and all the cover that these bass take us in in our area. So, uh, you know, a lot of people up north might be tying a little bit longer, you know, six pound liter, eight pound liter in those crystal clear waters. Sometimes you go in for smallies and things of that nature. But for us, I like something like just, you know, sturdy 10, 12 pound fluorocarbon liter for my spinning setups and uh, that's that. All right, y'all, and don't think we are sleeping on the Twitch rod. You might be wondering where it's at. It is right here. We are probably gonna end up putting one of the existing reels on it for a short time. That way we have some casting gear to throw out some jerk baits on. That's really what we've been getting the most use out of the Twitch rod with. And we've been catching the majority of the fish lately, I feel like have been on jerk baits. This one is sick, very technique specific. A lot of times you're throwing those lighter cranks, jerk baits, uh, and walking top waters with treble hooks. You wouldn't throw something like a frog on this guy right here. This is a 6.9 medium action rod with a moderate tip. So, you know, you're not gonna be frogging, ripping them out of the thick stuff with this right here and trying to drive those heavy hooks on a frog home. What you're really gonna be doing is working treble hook baits primarily with this guy. Uh, a little bit lighter, so you can get a good fling with this tip, but then also, again, reverting back to those treble hooks, those small treble hooks on something like a jerk bait. What's gonna happen is you can literally bend those hooks out with a heavy rod and a fast tip. You can lose fish when you start yanking those things. You see how sometimes you catch fish on a jerk bait or a crankbait and, and the fish swipe at it, but they actually miss eating it, and you kind of get them on the outside of the body and skin somewhere around the mouth, right? And you can easily rip those hooks out, so you need a little give in that tip to keep those fish on the hook, and this rod right here, there's nothing better for jerk baits uh, than the Twitch rod. Gold series, you'll notice a very short butt end of the rod right there behind the reel seat, right? So that is perfect for whenever you are, well, I can, how can I demonstrate right now? So what the Twitch rod is designed to do is to work those baits with twitching rod movement rather than the reel. Think like, you know, your crank baits and things of that nature. So with the jerk bait, that rod movement is important and you don't want a long rod just bashing you in the rib cage the whole time, as well as something that you can kind of point down and angle towards the water, a little bit shorter length for that purpose. So you can really get the most out of those walking top water baits with treble hooks, as well as uh, your jerk baits. So the twitch rod is definitely getting utilized. I'm gonna put a reel on it and we're gonna tie some jerk baits on. And then lastly, we have a gold go to right here. And uh, this guy is gonna have a reel on it very soon. Let me know what reels 
you guys want to see us get like you know this is a rod and reel arsenal but i want to make a lot of these videos cater to what y'all want to see so like do you want to see us throw a lose reel on on these things do you want to see us throw some daiwas do you want to see us throw like what other brands are there i don't even know man as soon as we went shimano i'll tell you why we haven't thrown a lot of other reels it's just because we got a shimano that scorpion dc and we were so in love with it we just kind of fell in love with the shimano brand and we haven't really seen any reason to deviate since it's not because well we do believe they're pretty good but we know there's a lot of other quality products on the market and so if you'd like to see us throw them on the Guggen lineup let us know in the comments below i hope you guys enjoyed this video learned a lot from it uh one thing i'll leave you with is on your spinning setups on those finesse rods i would go with something like 10 to 20 pound braid to a you know 6 to 12 pound fluorocarbon leader when you're talking about the go-to rods if you had one all-purpose line to get the job done aside from some top waters if you had one rod with you and you only had one option for line on your only setup i would go with 15 pound fluorocarbon to get the job done across the board now on this twitch rod and jerk baits i would say 12 12 pound fluorocarbon is going to be your friend. A lot of times you're throwing those baits in clear water and you want that diving depth and you're throwing them oftentimes in open water. And so what'll happen is there's not too much for them to get you caught up in. So, you know, 10, 12 pound fluorocarbon is great for your jerk baits on the twitch rod. And yeah, that really covers it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe, drop a like, all the good things, you know, share the video with someone who you think needs to see it and wants in on the knowledge with these new rods. We are pumped to get out and throw them as soon as it warms up out here in Texas. Until then, y'all, we'll see you next time. Peace out. Ooh.